In this lesson, we will discuss the subgroups of a group. One way to study the structure of a group is to study the subsets of a group that also form a group. These subsets are called subgroups. So given a group G, a subgroup of G, is a subset of G that is also a group. So it has to be a group under the same operation of G. So let's be more precise about this definition of subgroup. Given a non-empty subset H of a group G, so a non-empty subset H of group G, this subset is called a subgroup of G noted by H and then it's a symbol for less than or equal to this is read H is a subgroup of G if one H has to be closed under the operation of G Suppose x and y are elements of h, then x times y has to be an element of h. Secondly, every element of h must have an inverse in h. So if x is an h, then x inverse is also an h. h is a subgroup if h is closed under multiplication and closed under taking inverses. A couple of notes about subgroups. Firstly, every subgroup h of g must contain the identity of G. So why is this true? Well, since H is non-empty, if X is in H, then X inverse is in H, because H is closed under inverses. So if, if X and X inverse are in H, then since H is closed under multiplication, the identity, which equals X times X inverse, is also an H. So we see that every subgroup H and G contains the identity element of G. Second note, if H is a subgroup of G, 
and x is an element of h, then the inverse of x is also an h, but this is the same inverse as the inverse of x in g. So the notation is not confusing. The inverses are still the same in a subset of, of G. Let's look at some examples of subgroups. First, let's look at the, the trivial subgroups. So the subgroup containing only the identity is a subgroup of G, and clearly G is a subgroup of itself. So these are the so-called trivial subgroups. So for a slightly more interesting example, consider the set of integers and the set of the rationals. Then the integers are a subset of the rationals, and since the integers are closed under addition and closed under inverses, we see that the integers is a subgroup of the rationals. Now the rationals are a formal group under addition, and they are a subset of the real numbers, and since the rationals are closed under addition and inverses, we see that the rationals are a subgroup of the reals under the operation addition. Now notice that the integers is a subgroup of the rationals and the rationals are a subgroup of the reals under addition. It does follow that the integers are a subgroup of the reals. So the relation is a subgroup is actually a transitive relation. Now consider the set E, which consists of all even integers. The even integers form a subgroup of the integers. Now we could check that a set H is actually a group by checking all of the group axioms. But once we know we're starting with a group G, it's actually easier to check that H is a subgroup of, of G without checking all the axioms of a group. So this next theorem states subgroup criterion So this is how you can check to see if a subset H is a subgroup of G. First, let's start off with a group G. Then a subset H of G. Is a subgroup of G. if and only if the following two conditions hold. One, H is non-empty. And two, For all x and y in H, the element x, y inverse 
is also an element of H. These are the two conditions you need to check on a subset H, and if these hold, then we can conclude that H is a subgroup of G. Now, if H is a finite subset of G, it's actually easier to show that H is a subgroup of G. We can replace the second condition with just checking that H is closed under multiplication. So further, if H is finite, then condition two can be replaced by condition two prime, which states that for all X and Y in H, X times Y is in H. So for finite sets, H, you just need to show that H is non-empty and that H is closed under multiplication to verify that H is a subgroup. So let's begin the proof. Let's do the forward implication of this if and only if statement. Let's assume that H is actually a subgroup of G. Since H is a subgroup, the identity element one is in H. And therefore H is non-empty. Now suppose eight X and Y are in H. Well, since H is a subgroup, H must be closed under multiplication. and undertaking inverses. So if X is in the set and Y is in the set, then Y inverse is in the set. So therefore X times Y inverse is in H. So this proves the forward implication. Now let's do the reverse implication. So we'll assume that conditions one and two are true. Then let's check the group axioms for H. Well, by one, we're assuming that H is non-empty. So since H does not equal the empty set, there has to be an element in H. So let's say there exists an element X in H. But if we let Y be equal to X, in condition two, We see that the identity element, which is X times X inverse, must be in H. Since by condition two, X times X inverse is in H. So 
H contains the identity of G. Since the operation of multiplication on H is the same as the multiplication operation on G, we don't need to check that this operation is associative, but now we need to check that H is closed under inverses. Well, by using statement two again, with the, the identity element and X, and H, we see that H contains the identity times X inverse, which is X inverse. So H is closed under taking inverses. Now if X and Y are elements of H, by a similar argument, we see that X and Y inverse are in H. And thus by two, the product X times Y inverse, inverse must be an H, but this just equals X times Y. So if X and Y are an H, then X times Y is an H, so H is closed under multiplication. And that verifies that H is a group but H is a subset of G, so therefore H is a subgroup of G. So H is closed under multiplication. Thus H is a subgroup of G. Well, finally, we need to show that if H is a finite group, then it suffices to show that H is closed under multiplication. So finally, suppose H is finite. And let's assume one and two prime are, are satisfied. So we're going to show that condition two was also satisfied. Well, by condition one, H is non-empty so there exists an element X in H. By two prime, the product of X with itself over and over again are all in, in H. So X, X squared, X cubed, and so on. All the powers of X are in H as well. But remember, H is finite. So if we have all these powers of X, 
eventually two of these powers of x are going to be equal to each other. So since h is finite, some power of x, so x to the a, will have to equal x to the b for some integers a and b. And without loss of generality, let's assume that a is greater than b. So eventually these powers start repeating and we see that x to the a is gonna equal x to the b. But then if we cancel b factors of x, we get the equation x to the a minus b equals the identity. And therefore we have x to the power a minus b minus one being equal to the inverse of x, which is an h. So if x and y are an h, then we see similarly that x and y inverse will be an h. So h is closed under inverses and hence by two prime, the product is in H as well. So we assume that one and two prime were true and we just showed that statement two holds. So this finishes the proof of the subgroup criterion. So to show that a subset H of G is a subgroup of G, we need to show that H is non-empty and that for any elements X and Y in H, X times Y inverse is an H. But if H is finite, we just need to show that X times Y is an H. Let's look at an example of a subgroup. Let G be an abelian group with identity one. And let H be the subset of G containing all elements of G such that X squared equals the identity. And we'll show that H is actually a subgroup of G. So we need to verify that first H is non-empty. Well, since the identity squared equals the identity, we see that the identity is an H, and therefore H is non-empty. Secondly, let's assume that X and Y are elements of H. We need to show that X, Y inverse is in H as well. Well, since X and Y are in H, by definition, we know that X squared is the identity and Y squared is the identity. So let's look at x, y inverse 
the quantity squared. We need to show that this is also equal to the identity. Well, xy inverse the quantity squared is xy inverse times xy inverse. But since g is a boolean, I can commute the y inverse and x in the middle to get this equal to x times x times y inverse times y inverse, which I can write as x squared times y inverse squared. But y inverse squared is the same as the inverse of y squared. And since x squared is the identity and y squared is the identity, and the inverse of the identity is the identity, we see that this equals the identity. So we've just shown that the quantity x, y inverse squared equals the identity Thus, x, y inverse is in H, and that verifies that H is a subgroup of G. Next, let's consider when a subset of G could fail to be a subgroup of G. So let's answer the question, How can you show that H, which is a subset of G, so a subset H of G is not a subgroup? Well, we saw that every subgroup must contain the identity element. So if you can show that the identity element of G is not an element of the subset H, then we can conclude that H is not a subgroup. Secondly, find an element X in H with X inverse not in H. So that would show that H is not closed under inverses. And similarly, if we can find elements X and Y in H, such that X times Y is not in H. So H is not closed under the operation of G, so therefore H can't be a group. So for example, consider the set of non-zero real numbers. So this set is a group under multiplication but even though the non-zero real numbers as a subset of the reals, this set is not a subgroup of the reals. So in particular, the additive identity is not in the set of non-zero reals. Another example, let H contain all the two cycles in the symmetric group Sn for n greater than or equal to three. And consider the two cycles, one, three, and two, three. So these two cycles are in H, 
but the composition one three two three so we see that this product maps one to three and then three gets mapped to two so we end up with a three cycle which is not an element of H a set of all two cycles so this shows that H is not a subgroup of SN.